So we've went over all the ranking bodies, the WBC, the WBA, the IBF, and the WBO. We've went over all their rankings. We've witnessed the garbage. Um, and I have no idea why a majority of these people are even ranked. So what we're now going to do is um, a ranking of how I believe it should look. Based on who they fought, the outcome, their skill set, and what they're trying to do is how I ranked all these fighters. Starting at number 15, I have Ray Robinson. He's 24, 3, and 2 with 12 knockouts and one knockout loss. He's 34 years old. The four fights that I have on his resume are Breedis Prescott, your Dennis Ugas, uh, Green Beans, and Josh Kelly. Now he beat Breedis Prescott, which is a, you know, a gatekeeper. He lost. He got knocked out by Dennis Ugas, but he still fought the man. Um, he beat Green Beans, and they gave him a draw, but he beat Green Beans. And then he lost to Josh Kelly. Um, but those are still um, decent names that'll get him on the rankings. The fact that he fought your Dennis Ugas, the fact that he beat Breedis Prescott, you know, Green Beans just dropped Bud Crawford, and Josh Kelly's a good-ass fighter that's not getting any credit. So I have, I have Ray Robinson at number 15. At number 14, I have 10 and 0 in one draw, 26 year old Orthodox fighter, Josh Kelly. Now Josh Kelly has Carlos Molina on his resume and Ray Robinson, and he's about to fight David Avenesian. Now, again, the Ray Robinson fight was a draw, um, but I had him winning that fight. Fighting Carlos Molina is like fighting Brutus Prescott. Carlos Molina has fought everybody. Julio Cesar Chavez twice, Mike Alvarado. I mean, this guy, Arasani Laura, Kermit Centron, James Kirkland, Corey Spinks, Bundridge, Ishe Smith. I mean, he, he's fought a bunch of fighters. Um, he didn't beat all those guys, but he didn't lose to all of them either. Um, so I give, I'm giving uh, Carlos Molina, Carlos Molina gets... That, that's, a, that's a good gatekeeper to have on uh, Josh Kelly's resume. So because I had Josh Kelly beating Ray Robinson, and I have Ray Robinson as number 15, and he's about to fight uh, David Avenesian, who I have ranked at number 11, and I'll go into that moving forward. Um, I have Josh Kelly at number 14 with the opportunity to move up. At number 13, I have Josecito Lopez. He's 37 and 8. He's an orthodox fighter, and he's 35 years old. Josecito Lopez has fought some good fighters, but he's a bona fide gatekeeper, uh, moving into journeyman status, if not already there. Um, he's knocked out Mike Dallas. He got knocked out by Jesse Vargas. Um, he knocked out um, Victor Ortiz. He fought Canelo Alvarez and Madonna. Uh, he knocked out Andre Berto. Um, he's, he almost beat Keith Thurman. Oh, you almost had it. You got to be quicker than that with a great body shot, and then he just knocked out John Molina. So, I mean, John Molina's a bona fide gatekeeper himself. Um, but Josecito Lopez being number 13 on my list is a good spot for him, but it damn sure is not good enough for him to be fighting Bud Crawford, which is what I'm hearing. At number 12, I have Jamal James, 26 and one, 12 knockouts, orthodox fighter, he's 31 years old. He has a couple of good fights, but mainly all of his fights are mainly gatekeepers. But he's a he's a he's a stylistic matchup for a lot of a lot of fighters because he's tall. He's six foot two and he's very rangy. Uh, but he fought Juan Abreu. He fought uh, Udenis Ugas. He he lost a decision to Ugas. Um, he beat Jojo Dan. He knocked out Diego Chavez. Um, he fought uh, Antonio DeMarco, uh, and he's about to fight Thomas Delorme. Now Thomas Delorme is not ranked on in my rankings, but he's ranked in a WBA. And this is for the 
interim WBA title, which is weird to me because Thomas Delorme is not ranked in the top five in the WBA. So how the hell is he fighting for an interim title? I don't know, but you know, it is what it is. Number 11, David Avenesian. And no, David Avenesian is number 11 simply because his gatekeeper is higher than other the other fighters below him, their gatekeepers. Um, and I'll get into that in a second. So David Avenesian is 26 and three and one. He's a, a orthodox fighter and he's 31 years old. He has 14 knockouts. Um, his gatekeeper is Shane Mosley. He fought an aging Shane Mosley and beat Shane Mosley. Well, an old Shane Mosley, not aging, old. And he beat Shane Mosley, which is the reason why he, he's uh, at number 11, because he hasn't beaten anybody else. I mean, he lost to my man Lamont Peterson. Um, he got knocked out by Green Beans, um, and he's about to fight Josh Kelly. So, I mean, if we look at it, you could say he should be lower than that. But like I said, his gatekeeper is better than the other fighters' gatekeepers. Um, so I got I got um, David Avenesian as number 11. Number 10, I have Speedy Rashidi Ellis. He's 26 years old. He's 22-0 with 14 knockouts. He also is an orthodox fighter. Now, now this is where um, my issue starts coming into place. Because if you look at the updated boxing rankings, Speedy Rashidi Ellis is not on here at all. This is an absolute disgrace, bro. Absolute disgrace. You have a bunch of people on here that have like two wins, eight wins, even Josh Kelly at 10 wins. Like, how are these guys in the rankings? But Speedy Rashidi Ellis is 22 and 0 with 14 knockouts. He's, on, he's a golden boy fighter and he's not ranked in the top 15 in any sanctioning body at all. This is a disgrace to me. Now, looking at the man's resume, you say, well, damn, he really hasn't fought a whole bunch of fighters, though. He hasn't fought no, a, a bunch of people, you know. But since when did that become the criteria when if you get like a, an interim WBC Latino belt or, or an, an international boxing federation like the IBF North American welterweight title, when, you, when people get those, mysteriously, they pop into the top 10 and they're fighting for a belt. Or if you look at like uh, these other, this booty dude, um, that's a WBA guy, he he's um, he, he got the same type of international belt and then all of a sudden he's fighting for a vacant, an actual vacant title. Like the way they're doing Speedy Rashidi Ellis is, is, is crazy to me because the man's skill set, he's got blistering ha fast hand speed. I mean, he's super aggressive. He's got really good footwork. I mean, put him in there. Let's see what he can do. I think that man is a beast. I think he deserves to be in the top 10. Um, it's a disgrace to me that he's not ranked at all, at least in the top 15 in the sanctioning body in one. He's not ranked in any. But you have bum-ass niggas like this that are ranked before him. Insane. Speedy Rashidi Ellis is top 10. That is my number 10 fighter. And I think if you match him up with some of these top guys, he'd fuck around and surprise you at number nine, I have Virgil Ortiz Jr. He's 15 and 0 with 15 knockouts. He's 21 years old and he's an orthodox fighter. Um, now here's my problem with this. I, I like Virgil Ortiz, I do. I think he's a beast, a really good fighter. The problem is his resume is just as good or bad as Speedy Rashidi Ellis's. Now, um, I have Virgil Ortiz above Speedy Rashidi just because of his knockouts. You know, he's 15 and 0 with 15 knockouts. But who's to say that Speedy Rashidi will, won't beat the brakes off of Virgil Ortiz? That's the reason why I have Virgil Ortiz where he's ranked right next to Speedy Rashidi. Now, this is no shade on Virgil Ortiz. But, I mean, come on, bro. Like, if you're looking at his resume and you compare his resume to um, Speedy Rashidi's resume, what's the difference? And Speedy Rashidi has fought more fighters. So, I mean, what is the difference? And... Who did, who did um, Virgil Ortiz fight to become the WBA gold champion? How is he the WBA gold champion? And he's ranked so high on the, all these sanctioning bodies, but Speedy Rashidi is not ranked at all. Like that, th that's, that is the problem that I have. That's why Speedy is number 10. And that's why Virgil is number nine and not higher. And don't get it twisted. Like I'm, I'm big on Virgil. I think Virgil is a beast. But the reason why I have these fighters ranked the way I have them ranked um, is because I don't believe they can beat the guy in front of them. That's the reason why I have that. Um, and 
if they can beat someone that's in front of them, I think the person that they can beat that's in front of them, it's easier or closer. That fight is a closer fight than the fighter that's before that fighter or before that fighter and so on and so forth. So I think Speedy Rashidi versus Virgil Ortiz is a damn good fight um, where I don't know who would actually win that fight. I would lean towards Virgil just because of his punching power, but that doesn't mean that Rashidi can't beat him. And that's the reason why they're nine and 10. So all these fighters will be close. Um, all these fighters, when I, as I'm ranking them, it's because I think the one above them, I would lean towards that fighter to beat them. Coming in at number eight, Jerron Boots Ennis. He's 22 years old. He's 25 and 0 with 23 knockouts. Um, the, the way that this man is being overlooked is an absolute disgrace to me. Now, if you look at his resume, I mean, you can compare this to anybody else's. You can look at Virgil Ortiz's resume, Boots Ennis, anybody else's resumes that is not like top five fighter. You can look at any one of these guys and, and Jerron Boots and his, his resume is right along with all the rest of them. I mean, he's the WBC uh, United States silverweight champion. I don't know why they have all these damn extra belts, but whatever. The bottom line is he has something where he should be in the top five um, in, in the sanctioning bodies. Maybe not, not again, not in mine because mine doesn't, I don't have all these stupid ass sanctioning bodies. It is just one ranking. That's it. So that's where Boots is at right now. But if you look at the boxing rankings, he should be in the top five somewhere, if not in all of them. This man is a beast, man. Blistering hand speed, punching power. Um, and again, he's close to Virgil Ortiz because I think I'd lean towards Boots to beat Virgil Ortiz. I'd lean towards, and if y'all don't, if you don't believe it, we'll make the fight happen. I, there's no other side of the street with this and all that other weird ass shit that's going on and yada, yada, yada. Make the fight then. I think Boots beat uh, Virgil. That's the reason why I have Boots at eight and Virgil at nine. This man, you know, Boots is a beast, man. He's tall. He's fast. He's rangy. He can bang on the inside. He can move on the outside and box on the outside. He's like a, a better version of Robert Easter. Number seven, your Dennis Ugas. He's 25 and four. He's got 12 knockouts. He's an orthodox fighter and he's 33 years old. Um, your Dennis Ugas is a very good fighter, man. He's a very good fighter. He's getting slept on a lot. Um, he, he lost to Amir Imam, but he beat Jamal James. Uh, he beat Thomas Delorme. He beat Ray Robinson. In my opinion, he beat Sean Porter, although it was a split decision. I thought he beat Sean Porter. He beat Omar Figueroa, and he just beat Mike Dallas. I mean, he has a solid resume. Um, I mean, he ain't, like he's not a, the, the, the greatest fighter in the world, but he's got a solid enough resume where he should be top five in all sanctioned bodies. Top five, if not top three. And how the fuck is he, how the fuck is he, um, not the WBA gold champion when he's ranked number one? How is he not the WBA regular champion? How is, how is two other fighters fighting for the interim WBA title and neither of them are ranked number one? That, to me, that's the most bogus shit I've ever seen in my life. The WBA is on some bull, well, all the sanctioned bodies be on some bullshit. But bottom line is, your Dennis Ugas is a beast. Um, he, bro, he, he should be fighting these top guys. Like I said, to me, he beat Sean Porter. Um, and I think he deserves, I think a great, a great fight will be him versus Bud. Why not? It's a great fight. I mean, uh, Keith Thurman don't got nobody to fight. Why not him? But anyways, your Dennis Ugas at number seven. Coming in at number six, Keith, one time, Thurman. 29 and one with 22 knockouts. He's 31 years old. And he's an orthodox boxer. Now, I don't really like Keith Thurman. I don't really have no disdain to, towards the man. Um, he, he fucked up some stuff, like some the fight where Earl Spence, he fucked that up. We got some dumbass motherfuckers floating around this country. <laughs> dumbass motherfuckers, you know? Yeah. Earl Spence, shit, the, the IBF champion, should have had an opportunity to fight the WBC and WBA champion to unify all three belts. Then we wouldn't be going through this motherfucking talk about um, Arrow versus Bud because there would only be one fight left had Keith Thurman not fucked everything up. So that that is where my my bitterness towards Keith comes. But other than that, I don't I don't really hate Keith Thurman like that because Keith Thurman he did fight Danny Garcia, he did fight Sean Porter. You know, he did uh, fight Diego Chavez, Carlos Quintana, 
You know, he did fight those guys. So Luis Calazo and Jose Cito Lopez, even though Jose Cito Lopez was putting in paws on his ass, he, he did fight those guys. You know, he did fuck up the unification. So right again, right now, he wouldn't have this conversation because there will be only one fight left for undisputed at welterweight if Keith Thurman didn't fuck it up. But he did. But, you know, I still give him the credit because he fought those guys. Um, now, I have him at I have him where I have him because in all honesty, bro, I, he hasn't been looking good to me as of late. And I think I think a Boots Ennis will put hands and feet on this man. That is a very close fight. Um, Jerome Boots Ennis versus Keith Thurman is very close. Um, Keith Thurman versus Ugas is very close. Um, and the fighters that I have in front of him, I believe at this point, they all beat him. At this point, I believe they beat him. Um, I think those are, those are tough fights and difficult fights. But at this point, like I said, I, I believe everybody that I have in front of Keith Thurman beats him. Now, if we'd have said this about two, three years ago, I wouldn't be saying the same thing. Um, but at this point in his career, all these guys ahead of him beat him. But he's still top. Uh, no, he's still number six for a reason. He's still number six for a reason. Number five. Danny Swift Garcia. Yes, I have Danny Garcia above Keith Thurman. Yes, Keith Thurman did beat Danny Garcia. So what? That was then. This is now. So, do something. Right now, I think Danny Garcia beats Keith Thurman. This is not the same Keith Thurman that fought Danny Garcia. This is a different Keith Thurman. I don't believe Keith Thurman can beat Danny right now. I really don't. Um, but hey, let's see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. I don't believe he can. Um, the Danny Garcia in the second half of that fight was putting hands and feet on Keith Thurman. And Keith Thurman didn't want no smoke at all. Um, and he he realized he hit Danny Garcia with his biggest shots. And Danny Garcia didn't drop. Um, and then Danny Gar and he hit, him, hit Danny with those big shots early in the fight. Uh, and Danny Garcia ended up winning the second half of the fight. That should, that should tell you all you need to know. Danny Garcia's chin is underrated as fuck, and don't nobody even talk about it. His chin is super underrated. To get caught clean like that, like how he was getting, bro, Danny Garcia is a beast, bro. Danny Garcia has fought just about everybody. Um, and the people that he didn't fight um, are not trying to fight him, except for one. <laughs> except for one. I mean, I think, um, again, um. Keith Thurman, um, him and Danny, he beat Danny, but that fight was close. That fight was very close. Uh, Danny Garcia versus Ugas, a very good fight. Danny Garcia versus uh, Boots Ennis, a very good fight, but I would favor Danny. I would favor Danny because Danny got that power. He got the experience. That's a very big fight for those guys. The, the lights will not be too bright for Danny Garcia, um, which is the reason why I have Danny Garcia as a top five fighter. He is number five on my rankings. Number four, Showtime Sean Porter. Showtime Sean Porter has, not even arguably, he has the best resume in the welterweight division. It's And it's not even close, bro. He, he has the best resume, bar and none. Now, he didn't, he didn't beat all these guys, but he has the best resume. You know, he fought um, Julio Diaz. He fought Devin Alexander, Pauli Malnagy, Kel Brook, Adrian Broner, Keith Thurman, Andre Berto, Adrian Ganados, Danny Garcia, Ugas, and Arrow. He fought these guys, and that's just that, like, welterweight, bro. That's just that welterweight. The, yo, he's fought every and anybody except Bud Crawford. Except Bud Crawford. Which is, which is, uh, it's a, it's a black eye on his resume. It's a black eye to, to have a fighter like a Sean Porter who is fighting any and everybody I'm ready to get that smoke on with any and everybody. But when it comes to Bud Crawford, all of a sudden they friends and yada, 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 this and that and that and this. It's like, dude, like you have done too much. You have fought too many to put this black eye on your, on your resume, to put this stain on you. That's one thing that people cannot take away from Sean is he fought everybody. He has the best resume at welterweight and it's not even close. But he, he put a, he put a self-inflicted stain on himself. He punched himself in the face with this shit. So it's like, it's like, man, 
I, I just feel like there there was no no reason for him to not fight Bud. He should have been actively and aggressively seeking that, especially if he's saying he wants to the Errol Spence rematch and he believes he beats Errol and blah 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 yada yada yada. Well, if you beat Bud and you have the WBO strap, you definitely are going to get a rematch. Definitely. And now I know um, Keith Thurman beat Sean Porter, but again, Sean, uh, Keith Thurman has not, bro, he's not active. He's not fighting um, big names and stuff like that. Now, well, not, not big names because he fought Manny Pacquiao. I don't want you to look at it like that. What I'm saying to you is Keith Thurman, iron sharpens iron. And if he is not out here consistently fighting these guys, then... You know, sitting on the sidelines, uh, faking an injury, getting an injury, disappearing. These type of things are going to happen, which is the reason why I have Sean Porter ahead of him, even though Keith beat him. And that fight was close, too. But that was more towards an active Keith. This is not a this is an inactive Keith, which is why I have Danny and Sean above Keith Thurman. Number three, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is 62 and 7 with two draws, got 39 knockouts, and got knocked out three times. He's 41 years old, and he's a southpaw. Um, Manny Pacquiao's a beast, bro. Man, he, he is a beast. He's a damn good fighter. Um, but he's also a ducker. And and when I say a ducker, I'm, I'm not talking about specifically ducking fighters, of which he did do in his prime. Of, he did do that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this man has has won every belt he's never unified and he's never been undisputed he has nothing left to prove but those two things that's it he's the only eight division champion blah 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 yada 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 even though he fought um antonio margarito at 54 when neither of them had been fighting at 54 before that fight but whatever the bottom line is he has the accolades to back up his name except for two things he has never been unified Never. He has the opportunity to be a unified champion. The only time that he, he could have unified is had he beat Floyd Mayweather. If he beat Floyd Mayweather, then he would have been unified for the first time in his career. But he didn't do that. So he has never, never been a unified champion. He has never, ever been an undisputed champion. This is his opportunity. There is two fighters both of whom are in front of him that he can beat to become unified with one and then undisputed by beating both. That is something that he has never, ever done. But yet he's talking about fighting Mikey Garcia for the bag. But this is, you, if he wasn't a champion, I would not have him ranked so high, but he is. He is a champion because it pisses me off the simple fact that he's been talking about fighting Mikey Garcia. Dude, you're 41. You're 41. It is it is undisputed and unified. That's all that's left for you to do in, in boxing. That is it. Those are the two things you've never done, and that's all that's left for you. You don't need to be chasing Mikey Garcia. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to look for Mikey. Dude, 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 man, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get out of here with that. Fight Arrow. Fight Bud. Wrap it up. Call it, hang, hang up the gloves. Fight both of them and hang up your gloves. Number two, Terrence Bud Crawford. He's 36 and 0 with 27 knockouts, and he's 32 years old. He's a South, he's actually both. He can fight both. Both uh, forward, front, he does it all. Um, but so here's, here is the separation between him and the king of welterweight division, Earl Spence. Here's the separation. Earl Spence has a better welterweight resume than Bud Crawford. Period. Bud Crawford has fought Jeff Horn. I take massive confidence from this fight. I, I, I believed in myself before, but now, now that I've done something like this, I've climbed the Pacquiao Mountain, which is what I like to call it. But now I've got to look at the other guys that are up there as well, which is uh, Keith Thurman and Errol Spence. Uh, they're two targets, I guess, on the list as well. Jose Benavidez, who had an injured leg. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help. Amir Chin Khan and Green Beans, who lost to Ray Robinson, in my opinion. That is it. So he's fought Jeff Horn for the belt, Jose Benavidez, coming up, who had a leg injury, 
Amir Chin Khan, and then his mandatory in green beans. Well, the king, the number one welterweight in the world, Errol, the truth, Spence, he fought Chris Van Heerden five years ago, who they were talking about him fighting Bud. Now, he beat up Chris Algieri. He beat Lender Bundu. He went to the UK and stopped Kell Brook. He beat Lamont Peterson. He beat his mandatory in Carlos Ocampo. He beat up Mikey Garcia, and he just beat Sean Porter, the guy that Terrence Bud Crawford won't fight. So this is this is very a very easy distinction. And in doing so, the king of the welterweights collected two belts. In doing so. So I, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to understand where anybody can say that Bud Crawford is number one at welterweight. I, I have no idea where anybody could get this, this um, equivalence, this false equivalence from. Bud Crawford is a very good fighter, a damn good fighter, special fighter, talented as all hell. But you are fighting at welterweight, dude. You are not fighting at 140. All right. Julius Ndongo, Felix Diaz. Felix Diaz, Eric Molina, Victor Postal, Hank Lundy, Derry Jean, Thomas Delorme. Bro, none of those, none of that matters. All of those guys are at 140 and below. Jeff Horn matters. Errol Spence and, and, and the world laughed at the thought of Errol Spence fighting Jeff Horn for the vacant IBF title if uh, Kell Brook vacated it. That was a joke. Jose Benavidez, bro. Was literally just got what stabbed or shot up in his legs and shit. Came to the fight all wrapped up. Never underestimate the powers of the handicap. <laughs> Amir Chin Khan, do I need to go over this man's chin? Green beans, you just bro. He lost. That was they. He got gifted a draw. And this nigga Green Beans drop bud. Come on, bro. C come on, bro. And we're 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 comparing the Sean Porter that Errol won, the Mikey Garcia fight that Errol uh, annihilated him, the Lamont Peterson, the Carlos Ocampo, the Kell Brook, the Leonard Bundu, the Chris Algieri, the Chris Van Heerden, the Phil Greco, the Sammy Vargas. I mean, who? What are we? What? Are, what are we comparing here? What are we talking about? The number one welterweight in the world right now is Errol. The truth, Spence. Now, I get it. Their names are tied together. I understand that. Their names are tied um, for welterweight superi superiority. But that's in a casual fame. Right now, the welterweight, the superior welterweight is Errol the True Spence. That is the superior welterweight. Bud Crawford is trying to challenge that supremacy. Okay? Let's not get it, let's not get it twisted. Errol is already on top. Bud Crawford is trying to challenge for that superiority. But Bud is stuck in what he did at 140, thinking that he just deserves it right away when it don't work that way. And everybody in here, everybody listens to this, everybody watching this video knows good and damn well that I'm right. Because if that's the case, then Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua would have fought three years ago. Now, this is how the rankings should look. This Errol, the truth, Spence, he is the king of welterweights. That, that's just it. Now, if you want to be the man, beat the man. Now, using my rankings, the next fight for Errol will be Bud. And if he beat Bud, the next fight will be Manny. And if he beat Manny, the next fight will be Sean. And if he beat Sean, the next fight will be Danny, and so on and so forth. And when you lose, if you if Bud Crawford fights Errol Spence and loses, he drops down to number nine. That gives the other fighters an opportunity. 
the ones that gives that gives a Manny Pacquiao the opportunity, it gives a Sean Porter, it gives um, a Danny Garcia, it gives a Keith Thurman, and so on and so forth. These fighters will not get overlooked if the latter, if it just keeps going like that. The, you drop down to number nine. Now you want to get back into the top ten, the top, I mean top five, no problem. Beat somebody in the top five, then you can take their spot. Somebody below you, if they want to move up, if if Bud Crawford fights Errol and drops down to number nine because he loses, well, if one of these other guys can jump up and take uh, Errol, uh, Bud's spot at number nine, they can move up, go fight Bud and beat Bud. That, that's just the bottom line to me, bro. That is the bottom line. That's how it should be. It makes absolutely no sense for these guys to, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and cherry pick this guy and fight this guy. Do fights that don't nobody want to see. If you keep this ladder like this, Bro, boxing will boom. It will boom because any fighter knows in order for me to move up, all I got to do is beat somebody ahead of me. We don't have to, the sanctioning bodies don't have to go nowhere and sit down and convene and talk about who's paying them more payola under the table. So let me move this guy up. No, you remove all of that corruption and bullshit because these are the rankings. And in order for one guy to move up, he must beat somebody in front of him. Now, if you want to go fighting a whole bunch of bums, go ahead. Fight away. Motherfucker, your resume can be 102. You can have two losses, one draw, 100 victories, and you'll still be ranked number four. The only way you move up is if the guy ahead of you loses or you beat them. That's it. That makes a lineal champion more valid because you are the man that beat the man. It makes a lineal champion more, it makes rankings more valid because in order for me to get a rank i gotta beat you it makes that number one spot it make the the fighter who was the number one fighter in the world he deserves it unequivocally because he beat everybody that was ahead of him or the people that were ahead of him lost there's no way around it so you literally when people say oh oh you don't deserve this and you don't deserve you cannot say the number one fighter don't deserve to fight the champion if you go by my criteria. The only way you move up is to beat somebody ahead of you. You want to fight voluntaries? Go ahead. That's not going to change the rankings. The only way to move up is to beat someone ahead of you. That is it. And the only fighters that get a shot at the champion is the number one competitor. That's it. Now, everybody else, you want to go out there and fight all these voluntaries and bums and blah, 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 and get a bazillion fights? Cool. Go ahead. Get them in. Go ahead and get them in. But the only person that has a, that has a bona fide, it, the mandatory means something. At the, we're using my rankings. The mandatory will mean something. And you must fight once a year, a mandatory. You must, the number one fighter must fight the champion once a year. No excuses. Because there is no four belts and five belts and all this other bullshit. There is one fight, one champion, one name that holds it. That's it. And in order to move up, you beat the guy ahead of you. And the, the, their voluntaries, is, it's not, the champion doesn't have a voluntary because you're fighting the number one guy. You want to, now, if you want to have a voluntary, if you want to have tune-ups, that's fine. You know, you can fight a... Uh, a top 10 guy. That's fine. But you must fight your number one every single year. Every single year. You can have 10 fights if you want to as a champion. As long as one of them is your mandatory in that calendar year, that's all that matters. Point blank and period. BFTB. Shout out to the mighty, mighty LDBC. And I'm out.